Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Fitzpatrick's Buccaneers going up against Cutler's Dolphins. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, it was a little late in getting here, but autumn has arrived on a beautiful November day in Miami, Florida. The excitement brewing here in South Florida. As a moment ago, the Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squared off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this <laughs> game, and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Parky now ready to get this one started and we are underway from Miami this fielded a few yards into the end zone and he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23 yard line coming off a 15 to 10 win last week in week 10 over the New York Jets here comes Ryan Fitzpatrick in the Tampa Bay offense and you know, Josh McCown was playing quarterback on the other side in that game. You and I did the numbers. Those two have played between them for 15 different NFL teams. Yeah, and that statistic just keeps rattling around my brain and really supersedes what those two did in the game against each other. McCown didn't play poorly. Fitzpatrick, 187 yards, touchdown intercept. His team won the game. But 15 teams between the two of them, they are survivors, and they're obviously good guys to have in the locker room because teams want to have them there. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. And now it's second down. Here's the offense and highlighted as a guy who gave himself his own nickname, the Dugginator. Brandon, you really can't nickname yourself. But if he keeps running at this level, he'll have plenty of good nicknames to choose from. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. And a look at the starters for the Miami defense. One of the more underrated yet valuable positions in the NFL is safety, and Rashad Jones epitomizes what you're looking for. A guy who can drop down into the box in the run game and tackle those bigger, stronger running backs. He can also cover people, whether it's tight ends or bigger slot guys, and that gives him the ability to stay on the field every down and make big plays. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively.
Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Fitzpatrick now from the 50. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Howard. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. To give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Back to the ground, Martin. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, from the safety of our booth, I think it's okay after that run that I call him still the name that maybe he's not too crazy about, the muscle hamster. Yeah, his teammates at Boise State called him that. He, he doesn't like that, though. He hates that name. He told us he prefers, and he told the world he prefers Duggernaut. It's always tough when you come up with your own nickname. It doesn't I stick. I hope it works for him, but I have my doubt. We're going muscle hamster here in the booth. They run again on first down. Martin fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action hit them over the top. Fitzpatrick now on second down. Over the middle complete. That's Howard. And he'll go down at the 28. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Well, that's the way you want to get an opening drive going, right? Because so often it's a tone setter. And I think even better when you're able to pick it up and convert with a running play. Because the last thing you want to do is play what I call rocket football. One, two, three, kick. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. to the ground. This time it's Martin. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. They run it again with Martin. Martin flexing the muscle. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Doug Martin, 26 yards. And the Bucs take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Throughout the game, we're going to track so many different statistics. But one is becoming increasingly in vogue, 
explosive runs, runs of 20 yards or more, and we just saw one right there to open this game. Now we'll see how the other team responds, because when you get a play like that against you this early in the game, you got to feel like your back's against the wall a little bit. Yeah, the pressure now increases on you because your first thought is we have to answer right now. Murray to add the extra point. And that one gives the Bucks a 7 to nothing lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a Doug Martin touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They'll be led out by the all-time leading passer in Vanderbilt history. The veteran quarterback, it's Jay Cutler. 11 previous seasons in the NFL, just one playoff appearance despite a right arm that is the envy of all quarterbacks in the league. I think this is an opportunity for him to rewrite his legacy. One more go in the NFL, and maybe people look at him in a different light. What would you say to scare him out of the booth and back onto the field? That's what I want to know. I just told him it's a lot easier playing quarterback than being a broadcaster. <laughs> for some reason, he bought it. <laughs> Now Cutler on first down. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. Defense gives up a touchdown the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A look now at the Miami offense. What I've always liked about Julius Thomas that kind of got lost a little bit the last couple of seasons is his basketball background. Remember, he played that in college before becoming a tight end in the NFL, and he's got to get back to that, playing above the rim, boxing people out so they can't get to him on pass routes. If he gets back to being that power forward he used to be, I think the returns would be really, really nice for the Miami Dolphins. They run it again with Williams. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. When Gerald McCoy entered the NFL, he was part of a huge debate around the league. Gerald McCoy or Ndamukong Sue? Who would be the better defensive tackle? They both had more than their share of moments. And what's made Gerald McCoy a perennial Pro Bowl player his ability to play just about anywhere on the defensive line, but especially to work over the centers and guards in order to create havoc in the pocket. On third down, Cutler. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. 
Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Here comes the Dolphins' defensive unit now. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all, but you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. Over the middle to Evans. And he's brought down after a good game. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Aaron, this one out for Evans. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. On second down, Martin looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He's got Evans, and he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. out here's the run with Martin and he's into the end zone touchdown Buccaneers Doug Martin with his second touchdown in this opening quarter and the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead and a pair of rushing touchdowns now for him in the first quarter. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game. How many times have we talk about low man wins, right? Move the defensive front aside, create those gaps and holes. He's found his way through them for two touchdowns. And after both of those touchdowns, he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet. That's he a, recognizes That's them. a smart man. You know what else he should do? If this continues, take them all to dinner. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a Doug Martin touchdown run.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. So the offense taking over in just a second. But you know, last year, going off the script a little bit, so much talk around Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, who would go one, who would go two, and will they pan out? Well, this year, they are both panning out really well. They certainly are, and they went one and two. Jared Goff, number one to the Rams. Wentz, number two to the Eagles. Wentz became the starter as a rookie, played all 16 games. And here in the second season, a lot of MVP talks around him, and rightly so. Jared Goff got left behind, only started seven games as a rookie, didn't play that well. Many people want to use the B word on him. For bust, not at all. He's playing at a... And he's going to be taken down. Cutler sacked. Second down, Williams. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Gerald McCoy is always going to be linked with Indomitian Sue. They came into the NFL in the same draft class. There's a lot of debate about who was going to be the better defensive tackle. They just do it two different ways. McCoy, more movement, more elusiveness. That allowed him to make the play there for a short game. Now Cutler on third and long. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Chris Baker able to drop him for a loss of 12. And it'll be fourth down. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Before we see this next possession, you and I were talking before the game about the AFC playoff picture. You got the Pats and the Steelers at 7-2. and two. Those are your best records in that conference. Chiefs at 6-3. and three. Really, they're running away with the AFC West. Yeah, and that's a surprise, isn't it? Because in preseason, we all, well, I shouldn't say all, but most of us probably thought the AFC West was the toughest division in football. But Denver has fallen off the pace. The Raiders have been a little bit of a disappointment, and the Chargers just can't gain traction. So right now, it's Kansas City's division to lose. And if they get home field, could you imagine hmm. all those teams having to visit Kansas City? One of the best atmospheres in the game. They start the drive with Martin. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down, nine yards to go. Now Fitzpatrick. Incomplete. The tight end Cameron Brait was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. 
hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Bucks on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and nine. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. This is caught by Jackson. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Throw it long, it can be a big play. You throw it short, it can be a big play for Deshaun Jackson. Yards after catch, always a big part of his game. Talking about speed, only Tyreek Hill was measured with a faster play last year than Deshaun Jackson, who hit 22.6 miles per hour on a touchdown versus the Cardinals in Week 13. And now a first down following that long game. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. And before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. 14-0 is our score, and we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. And they've got it here with a first down. pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone and it'll be second and goal that play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it but still gotta like the way they're moving the football partner absolutely pretty good room to run on that last play yeah they didn't get a first down but still you'll take runs like that each and every time won't you they'll run for it with martin and after the good game last play this time they say uh as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that is going to set up third and goal. When I see Cameron Wake make plays like that, I can't help but shake my head sometimes. He had to go to Canada first before he came back to the NFL. Or he's now an all-pro. Yeah, undrafted out of Penn State, but look at him now. But just think about all the pass rushing moves he has, his ability to play against the run. Remember, he was a combo outside linebacker, defensive end. Now he's just simply one of the best in the NFL. Third and goal for Fitzpatrick. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Murray's kick is up and good. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? way across the 30 to the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Play action with Cutler. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. William Golston in there to sack him for a loss of six. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green. From the gun, it's Cutler. And the pressure gets to him again. William Golston in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded at the 20. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And out will come the offense as they take over. Doug Martin now gearing up to go again here on offense. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here, it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And a couple of big boys up front defensively, and in that 4-3, those D-tackles so vital. Extremely vital. I love how you describe that, because if they control things up front, often it's over the guard. Sometimes they slide and make it over the center. It's really hard to get a play started then, because a lot of teams want to start inside out running the football. But against a good 4-3, you may not find any space. And on that play, there was zero space, no gain. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And 
And off comes to Martin. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. They give to Martin, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Bucks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and eight. Operating from the gun, Fitzpatrick. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Ray Malaluga. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. Top oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Dolphins getting set to go here. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. the 28 11 yards on the pickup and that'll make it third and one look the first down marker is out there but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation which usually means throw the football in this case they went against the tendency and ran it and boy the reward was there a big big pickup and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. The Dolphins on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position, the last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. So now first and 15. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Down to about the 22 here. And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. 
And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. back. Oh, a big hit at the 21-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Green, 39! Green, 39! Play action. Cutler. And he finds a man. It's Fasano. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Anthony Fasano from 21 yards away. And the Dolphins are able to cut into this lead. Remember the one-dimensional tight ends who just put their hand in the ground and block people? Well, if you're that guy now, you're probably a fullback in an I-formation offense. These tight ends nowadays can do everything. Block, run, and catch. Beautiful connection for a touchdown. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And it's 17-7. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. now set to kick it away and that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Airing this one out for Evans. And this will be caught at the 30. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 44 yards. This one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Again, it's Martin. 
And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Throwing Fitzpatrick. His throw caught at about the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Martin and he'll take it into the end zone touchdown Tampa Bay Doug Martin on his way to a monster game three first half touchdowns and the Bucs are going to add on to their lead this is becoming quite the half he's had here remember in our pregame meetings they talked about wanting to run the football and staying with it well, when you're scoring this many touchdowns, there's no reason to go away from it, is there? They are off to a fantastic start. They hope it continues. Three already for him. Here's Murray for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a Doug Martin touchdown run. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. It's Williams, and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. Second down. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. 
On first and ten, it's Cutler. To the right side here, the tight end, Thomas. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. On second down, Cutler. His throw incomplete. The tight end, Julius Thomas, the intended target. And it's third and five. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Color to throw again. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. On second down, here's Cutler. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Out of the gun, it's Cutler. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked, instead it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Fitzpatrick on first down. And incomplete on the deep ball. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it's second down. Well, with that pass falling incomplete, let's have some fun. You know, last week we talked about all the celebrations we're seeing across the NFL. How about the sack race two weeks ago that the <laughs> Chiefs Kelsey? did? Yeah, how yeah, about that? Yeah, that was pretty good. And he scored the touchdown. So they must have known whoever scored the touchdown, they would allow that person to win the sack race. The other one stumbled and fell. I thought that that was fun and, and, and somewhat original. How about this past week in the game that I saw, Washington and Minnesota? Oh, the leapfrog. Yeah, they played leapfrog after, I believe, an Adam Thielen touchdown. So that was a lot of fun. But Stephon Diggs, he doesn't know quite the, the rules sometimes <laughs> crop up. He went trying to Velcro himself to the goalpost after a touchdown. That's a penalty. That's a penalty because the only prop you can use is the ball. Now well, the offense lining up first and ten. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. 
Well, with that incompletion, I want to ask about the game that you worked this last week in Minnesota and Washington. And Minnesota's Teddy Bridgewater didn't play, but active again on the sideline was very, very emotional, wasn't it? He certainly was, and I can't even begin to imagine what the road was like coming back, the rehab, the lonely days, the pain, all of that because at one point, he was told he may never play in the NFL again. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Now the Dolphins are going to take another timeout here. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Third and long, Fitzpatrick following the sack. What can he and the gang come up with? And a first carry here for Charles Sims. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. <laughs> oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. So now here come the Dolphins. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A give to Williams, running right. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Dolphins are on the bad end of things at home. We'll have two quarters to turn it around. The Buccaneers came in prepared for this game, and it shows in the way they played. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Fifth way right through the first quarter. Martin's going to dart up the middle, and finally on play 12, they score. They strike first in the half. Buccaneers on offense, first quarter winding down. Evans is wide open, able to make the grab. And he'll end up at the 15-yard line before being tackled. Later on the drive, it's Martin who gets into open space. And this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. That puts them on top by 14. Bucks now on third and eight. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Kyle Lugos is happy to come away with the pick and end the drive. After the pick, offense comes out now. Cutler's got the completion here, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. First and 10, as that cuts the lead down to 10-7. The long ball will find his mark here, and he'll be tackled at the 31-yard line. 
sticking with the same drive. Martin's going to run off the left side, and this fine play drive goes for a touchdown. Okay, Larry, a fairly one-sided first half as we get set to go in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They start the second half here with Williams. And he got blown up on that play back at the 20. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push them back more. From the shotgun, Cutler over the middle, it's Thomas. Nifty move there on the run, but ultimately brought down at the 25. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. The Dolphins on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Throw in here. Cutler over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First down, it's Cutler. Try to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Parker that time. That'll bring up second down. Let's shift gears for a second and look back to this last week and some of the top performances that we had. The Saints in the backfield. You had Kamara and Ingram combining for 298 rushing yards. Yeah, the Saints were the first team with six rushing touchdowns in that game. Zero punts in the game, so their punter Thomas Morstead Got the weekend off with pay. Not bad, huh? <laughs> First time that's happened since the 1941 Bears. And how about Robert Woods with the Los Angeles Rams? Second straight week with two touchdowns. They brought him in to show the guys how to be a professional. <laughs> He's also showing them how to be a productive. Second and ten. It's Cutler again. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. 
give him six on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. The Dolphins on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. To throw again is Cutler. And that is incomplete. Now we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. He's been terrific so far. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. And Dominican Sue coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Yeah. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. That'll be a gain of 15 yards. And they're going to have a third down. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He finds Humphreys. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. I'll give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for them, too. Just get the playoff. Now Fitzpatrick. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Carry number 20 here for Martin. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. So it'll be first down here after the run. Play 
Play fake. It's Fitzpatrick. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin. And that will bring up second down. Well, let's make a pivot here. We're in the midst of week 11, Charles. NFC picture right now for the playoffs. you got the Saints, Vikings, and Rams at 7-2. and two. Eagles' best record in football at 8-1. and one. What are you seeing out of that side? Well, I'm seeing the things that you're seeing. Those teams setting the pace, and I'm not sure how they're going to be headed off. Now, the one I'm identifying as a real potential is going to be the L.A. Rams because they just haven't done it before. But they're playing at a really high level. They are actually down, if it turns into a tiebreaker, a game to Seattle because Seattle beat them head-to-head. -head. And just think about the potential home field advantages. Mm. Philadelphia, imagine playing in front of those people. New Orleans in the Superdome, okay? Imagine if Seattle gets it, how tough it is there. But Minnesota, if they win it and win out, they'll host the Super Bowl. Think about that. Fitzpatrick now. A dump off to Sims. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain at all on the play there. And that brings up fourth. When a linebacker is able to sit at the second level and see things develop in front of him, as soon as he got a hint that the quarterback was checking it down, he just made a beeline directly for the receiver and ended up making the play. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They'll throw on first down with Cutler. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Now, that gives me a second to give a shout-out here, Charles, to Adrian Claiborne. He had six sacks against the Cowboys this last week. Absolutely phenomenal performance. Now we're listing his name next to guys like O.C. Yumanura, Fred Dean, who's a Hall of Famer, and Derek Thomas, who's a Hall of Famer. I mean, we're talking about some of the all-time guys getting to the quarterback. Six sacks. It also helped that Tyron Smith, the all-pro left tackle for the Cowboys, didn't play. Chaz Green tried to replace him to no avail. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Up, On third down, Cutler. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. This is taken at the 23. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. Over the middle to Evans. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They run, Martin, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. the play fake here Fitzpatrick and this is going to be incomplete well on that incompletion let's discuss San Francisco they're off the schneid they beat the Giants so both of those teams now one and eight Cleveland the only remaining winless team in the NFL and again for them to get out of the number one pick sweepstakes because no one really wants to have that right Here's our upcoming schedule. Talk about Cleveland. Jacksonville at Cincinnati, at Los Angeles Chargers, Green Bay, Baltimore, at Chicago, at Pittsburgh. Where's the win? I think they're going to win this week. You like them this week against Jacksonville? They're at home. I like that one. I'm identifying Baltimore down the stretch. Oh, you got Baltimore down the stretch. We'll see. I think Cleveland, this is the week. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. They'll run it. Here's Martin. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So while the offense has had a big day, no one on that side of the ball is excited about seeing a loss like that. Their goal, to make every play positive. And when you have a bad one like that, your next goal is to not let it spiral into more. Here's Brian Anger now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll try to get this running game going with Williams. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second down following the run. Play action. Cutler. And his throw is incomplete. 
He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas, and it's third down. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Dolphins on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Cutler. And he's going to be taken down. Jay Cutler sacked in the end zone for a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. And this will be taken at the 13. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They go play action. Fitzpatrick. And a catch right side by Evans. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. From the gun, Fitzpatrick looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard third down here. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Bucks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and five. From the gun. Fitzpatrick. He's got Evans. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Fresh set of downs here. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A gain of six there on first. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Four yards remaining now on second down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's the Bucs. They've got the football. They also are in front here on the scoreboard as we start the fourth. Ready. 
Now Martin. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. So the offense needing four yards, it's third down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh, pressure comes, and the Dolphins block it. And they'll wind up taking over there in their own territory inside the 40. Uh, so much for pinning him, really deep, short punt. Could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. In however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. They don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. On first and ten, it's Cutler. It's caught, Stills, right side. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time, down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Second down now after the pass completion. Now Cutler. And Fasano here brings it in. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Let's go. Green, 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. Second down, Cutler. And Stills has got it. Touchdown, Miami. 
Kenny Stills, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins are able to draw a bit closer. This is similar to baseball, where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Now parking for the extra point. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. So that drive spanned five plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. now set to kick it away on the return it's Ryan Smith solid return pretty good field position they'll start at the 32 yard line Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now all right so let's look at these numbers I don't want to read the tea leaves here too much but maybe he's in his own head a little bit after that hot start and the cool off sometimes that happens and this is where you get tested as a player in this league if you truly want to be an impact player or a star because that's what they're going to face each and every game extra coverage extra people <laughs> so now do you fight through it do you find other ways or do you allow it to affect you to the point where you're no longer an impact on the game now a play fake here on first down he's going to air one out and intercepted maybe the turning point they need picked up by Xavier Howard and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field Wait a second, they did not accept that after the incompletion. What? I've, I've, your, your look is just as puzzled as mine. <laughs> I got nothing for you here. You have to take that penalty, don't you? It's free yards. This is Williams. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Second down, here's Cutler. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. William Golston able to disrupt yet another pass play, his third sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far.
And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Out of the gun, it's Cutler. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on here to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. finish. Now Parky for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And we turn our focus to Doug Martin. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. <laughs> that's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is by Thema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. 
And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Play action now. Fitzpatrick. And his throw here is incomplete. Big O.J. Howard, his intended target. And it'll bring up third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. On third down, Fitzpatrick. Now Fitzpatrick hit. It's out. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. Well, Parker, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field. And they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. And out come the Dolphins now. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> And a great spot to start this drive from here. Hang on now. Blue ah. Following the fumble recovery, it's Cutler. And he checks this one down to Williams. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. to throw on second down. This will be caught at about the six. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. here on first down. And that is out of the back of the end zone incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time, and now it's second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. And from the three now, it's second and goal. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Damian Williams, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead. And I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> a little salt, a little pepper, yeah, goes hey, down pretty easily. I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments. I can't believe I just brought that up. Because Frank Reich at Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, oh. and that was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like he still harbors some pain from that game. You know, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> now set to kick it away. 
This is taken at the three. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And back onto the field. Here comes the Dolphins' defense. And they forced the fumble last time. Now four turnovers for this defense. They've been darn good. It's become a feeding frenzy, hasn't it? I mean, almost like the Sharks. I mean, they descend upon their prey. That's what they've done this entire game. Four takeaways, they preach it, and today they're living it. Well, when you have that many, you probably think, all right, well, we'll just get another one now, right? That's how it works. Everyone feels like, if I didn't get one, I'm doing something wrong. First down, Fitzpatrick. His throw incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Throwing again, Fitzpatrick, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Fitzpatrick. And now another one thrown incomplete. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Well, the mental focus. Yeah, level. that's but true. got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Brian Anger now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. On first down, it's Cutler. And he will find a man here as Thomas comes open. And he's brought down after a good game. 23 yards on the play. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Set, blue lining, blue lining. 
They'll hand it off now. Williams. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Here's Cutler. And this is going to be incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans. He's north of 150 yards in this game. He's been doing his thing, hasn't he? That he has, and he's been enjoying himself. And it's the type of game that you get locked into a pretty good groove. May not be record-shattering, but it's the type of game that if you accumulate that throughout a season, you can be one of the top receivers in the game. See how much they incorporate him here on this drive. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first and ten, Fitzpatrick. It's caught. Humphreys. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. Now I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. Fitzpatrick on first down. Evans has it left side. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. On first down. Fitzpatrick. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. Go, 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 go. 
So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in the balance. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. To the air again, Fitzpatrick. That is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. They'll look to throw. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Deshaun Jackson, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Jay Cutler now to lead his offense back out there. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? It's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. So the false start will back them up five. False start, offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. It's Williams. And an alley to run. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And it'll make it a second down. The Dolphins moving with a sense of urgency here. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. He'll look to throw. 
And it's caught by Parker. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Gerald McCoy in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Back to throw. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Back-to-back -back big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for them. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out. Draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Throwing now is Cutler. He's going to let it fly. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gets him one more chance here on fourth down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. Foster, offense. And that'll set him back five. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. It's complete to Grant. The Red Sea parts, and there he goes. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Wow. How many practices we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there? Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Parkey now set to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, 
Now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Now the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Fitzpatrick. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Fitzpatrick to throw. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. Fitzpatrick. Complete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. They was trying to get it to Doug Martin, and it's third down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Now Fitzpatrick. A jump off to Sims. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Now they burn the timeout. And they're kind of in that gray area where they might be able to get two plays in, but maybe just one play left in this ball game. We'll see. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. The offense staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and ten. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it's looking like the Dolphins are going to win the football game. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Let's go. 
Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. So how about that comeback that we just witnessed going into the fourth quarter? I don't know that we had written them off, but it, it looked bleak. They were able to get it done. They put up a barrage of points and reeling them in and running them down and winning it. Wouldn't you love to be in their locker room right now? Think about the energy that's radiating out of there right now. They're talking about belief, sticking together, and finding a way to win. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.